لم تبدا نكبه ثمانيه واربعين قبل ستين عاما بدات سياسيا قبل اكثر من مئتي عام عام الف وسبعمائه وتسعه وتسعين استعصت هذه الاسوار هنا في عكا على نابليون فاتجه تفكيره الاستعماري ضد توسع بريطانيا ووجه نداء الى يهود العالم O oh Israelites, rise up. This is the moment. France is extending its hand to you with the legacy of Israel. Rush to reclaim your position amongst the peoples of the world. Napoleon's appeal made headlines in the French press. But Napoleon was defeated. The only memory of him left in Acre is a statue that bears his name erected at the top of a hill. Yet Napoleon's idea of creating a Jewish presence in the region did not die. Forty years later, Britain revived the plan in response to Muhammad Ali's attempts to unify Egypt and Syria. In 1840, the British Foreign Secretary Lord Palmerston wrote to his ambassador in Istanbul. You have to convince the Sultan and his entourage that it is high time to open Palestine for the immigration of Jews. The number of Jews in Palestine at that time did not exceed 3,000. At the head of the Jewish community's response to the British initiative was Baron Edmund de Rothschild. He visited Palestine on four occasions to explore investment opportunities and spent over 14 million francs to establish 30 Jewish settlements. The most important amongst these was Rishon Lichion, which raised this flag in 1885 while Palestine was still under Ottoman rule. Today, the remains of Baron Rothschild lie in a mausoleum near Haifa, where Israeli children come to learn about a wealthy man who supported Israel over a hundred years ago. In 1885, the term Zionism was first coined by the Austrian writer Nathan Birnbaum. The aim of Zionism was settlement in Palestine. The word Zionism is derived from Zion, the name of a hill in Jerusalem. طبعا كان في طائفة يهودية في البلاد تحت الحكم العثماني بس هذا ما كان ما كانوا سهينة هم كانوا يهود محليين. أما اليهود اللي أجوا من أوروبا خصوصا من شرق أوروبا هذيك الوقت في أواخر يكون 19 كان بدهم يبنوا صهيوني يهودي جديد. In 1896, the Zionist journalist Theodore Herzl published his book The Jews State, written in German. But the Jews of Europe were dreaming of immigrating to America. This is why Dr. Max Nordau Herzl's right-hand man sent two eminent rabbis to visit Palestine. They sent back a reply of only one line that read, The bride is beautiful, but she is married to another man. Nordau understood that Palestine was not, as Herzl said, a land without people, but a land with a people that had lived there for thousands of years. The following year, Nordau and Birnbaum participated under Herzl's leadership in the first Zionist Congress in the Swiss city of Basel. The Congress adopted a program for the establishment of a recognized homeland for the Jewish people in Palestine. <laughs> لإقامة هذا الكيان وثانيا اتصال بدول العالم الكبرى آنذاك في أوروبا بشكل خاص حتى تحمي واحدة منها تحمي هذا الكيان 
فهذا هو أبو الدولة الصهيونية ما في شك لكنه ليس مبدع الفكر الصهيوني عادة الدول الكبرى هذه تكون بينها تنافس مصالح يعني كيف استطاعت الدول الأربع الكبرى في ذلك الوقت يعني أن تدعم كلها فكرة الصهيونية؟ هو معقد مؤتمر لهذه الدول معا واتفقت الدول على دعمه هو كان يثير تنافس بين دولة وأخرى كان يكذب على دولة أنه أنا سأكون معكم إذا أسستم دولة إسرائيل ضد الدول الأخرى أنا أؤمن مصالحكم على حساب مصالح الدول الأخرى Britain reiterated its interest in establishing a Jewish state when its Prime Minister Campbell Bannerman announced that it would be important to establish a strong foreign presence close to the point where the Mediterranean was linked with the Red Sea. He added, We should install in this region near the Suez Canal a force hostile to the people of the country and friendly to the European countries. بحيث أن هذا الجسم يكون معتمد على الاستعمار الغربي ويعتمد على على الأوروبيين هذا الجسم ضمان بقائه أن يكون ما حوله ضعيفا. في كمان فكر عند الأوروبيين إنه اليهود مكربين لإلهم أكثر من العرب وإذا تكون هون دولة يهودية بيكون أفضل إلهم. In 1907, the British chemist and member of the World Zionist Organization, Chaim Wiseman, visited Palestine for the first time to establish a company in Jaffa to develop the land of Palestine. This was supported by the Rothschilds to systematically purchase lands in Palestine. Within three years, a major deal was struck. The Jewish National Fund bought over 200,000 dunams in the Marj bin Amr plain of northern Palestine. The seller was the Lebanese Sursok family, who were living in Europe, who had bought their land from Ottoman officials. The deal provided for the eviction of tens of thousands of farmers then living on the land. أكثر من 60 ألف فلسطيني في منطقة مرج بن عامر إذا كانت النكبة تعني ترحيل الإنسان الفلسطيني من أرضه والاستيلاء على أرضه في القوة ضمن هذول المركبين فحقيقة النكبة بدأت عشرات السنين قبل 48 A more uh, drastic form of colonialism than the average classical European colonialism in the sense that their purpose was actually not so much only to exploit the locals, but uh, to drive them out. From the very early moment that the Zionist movement uh, targeted Palestine uh, as the, the place for Jewish independence and statehood, and it was clear that there were Palestinians on the land, uh, Zionist leaders and common people alike were got used to the idea that the only way of uh, making Palestine a Jewish state is by uh, causing the Palestinians to leave. إخلاء الفلاحين هو تطبيق للمبدأين من ناحية الاستيلاء على الأرض تسمى تهويد الأرض وثانيا العمل العبري وهو الاستعادة عن فلاحين عرب يهود إما من شرق أوروبا وفي حالات أخرى عندما قل العدد استعانوا بيهود من اليمن. The Jewish militia, known as Hashemair, was established to protect the Jewish settlements. The Jews held demonstrations to demand the recognition of Hebrew as an official language under Ottoman rule. The Arab and the Palestinian were aware of the first day of the Sahyuniyah. It was a political movement. تبحث عن رأس مال لاستعمار أرض وتوظيف البعد الديني لجعلها وطن لمن تبقى منها يهود العالم في هوية وكيان ومستقبل سياسي هذا الوعي كان واضح جدا عن نجيب عزوري كان واضح جدا عن نجيب نصار The Palestinian pharmacist Najib Nassar published the newspaper Al Kamal in Haifa to draw attention to the ambitions of the Zionists, saying that the Jewish state would be a poisonous dagger in the heart of the Arabs. Al Kamal was a small newspaper that Nassar produced together with his wife Sataj Bahai, 
However, he was victimized by the Turks and was assaulted, harassed and imprisoned. خلال الحرب البريطانيين كان يفكروا عن الموقع يعني فلسطين على قرب من قناة سويس ودور بريطانيا في مصر أنذاك كان يدل على دور خاص لبريطانيا في فلسطين ورأوا في اليهود وفي الحركة الصهيونية شريك في أمر استراتيجي استعماري. In 1915, a secret memorandum was presented to the British cabinet under the title The Future of Palestine. This was drafted by Herbert Samuel, the first convinced Zionist to be a minister in the British government. According to his memorandum, it is certain that the time is not ripe to establish an autonomous Jewish state in Palestine. Therefore, Palestine should be placed under a British mandate after the war. Under British rule, facilities would be given to Jewish organizations to purchase land and to found colonies. And Jewish immigration would be given preference. We should place three to four million European Jews amongst Mohammedans. Samuel's recommendations were taken into account in the secret British-French agreement, Sykes-Picot, which was named after its two architects, British politician Sir Mark Sykes and the French diplomat Francoise Georges Picot. It opened the way for the establishment of a Jewish state. بس لازم نعرف هذا الحكي إنه اللي قسم أرضنا خاطف حكينا كبيرنا. Mark Sykes was a close friend of Chaim Wiseman. Before the signing of the Sykes-Picot Agreement, the two men exchanged correspondence that clearly indicated Sykes' support for the Zionist movement. Just a year later, in 1917, the British cabinet, headed by British Prime Minister David Lloyd George, pledged to establish a homeland for the Jews in Palestine. The pledge came in the form of a letter from the British Foreign Secretary Arthur Balfour addressed to the Zionist leader, Lord Rothschild. <laughs> ولما كتب رسالته إلى لورد روتشايلد كان يكتب باسم الحكومة البريطانية روتشايلد كان يلعب دور شخصي لوبي ليشجع الحكومة البريطانية أن تأخذ سياسة معينة بالنسبة إلى دور اليهود في فلسطين فكان يمثل الحركة الصهيونية وورا كلهم خايم بايزمان اللي كان المسؤول بالنسبة للورلد زينست اورجنيزيشن او المنظمة الدولية الصهيونية ف واللي شارك في صياغة الوعد يعني نعم بريتن هاد نو مورال او بوليتيكال او ليجال رايت تو بروميس ذا لاند ذات بيلونغ تو ذا اربس تو انذر بيبل سو ذا بالفو ديكلاريشن واز بوث ايمورال and illegal. One month after Balfour's pledge, the Zionist achievement was celebrated at a ceremony in London. Speakers included Lord Rothschild, Herbert Samuel, Mark Sykes and Chaim Wiseman. A few days later, the British army commanded by General Edmund Allenby occupied Jerusalem. Entering the Holy City alongside Allenby was a Jewish military unit established under British auspices. One member of this unit was to become a familiar face in the future, David Ben-Gurion. The unit also included Ziev Jabotinsky 
Anemia Rabin, father of Yitzhak Rabin. Within a month, General Allenby received his friend Chaim Wiseman in Jerusalem. The number of Jews in Palestine at this time was 50,000 amidst half a million Arabs. Jews made up less than 10% of the population. As World War I ended and preparations for the Paris Peace Conference were underway, the President of the United States, Woodrow Wilson, sent a committee to the Middle East to explore the Palestinian situation. Headed by the academic Dr. Henry King and the politician Charles Crane, the committee presented a report which recommended if the President Wilson's principle of self-determination is to rule, and so the wishes of Palestine's population are to be decisive as to what is to be done with Palestine, then it is to be remembered that the non-Jewish population of Palestine, nearly nine-tenths of the whole, are emphatically against the entire Zionist programme. And this is shared very generally by the people throughout Syria, the officers generally thought that a force of not less than 50,000 soldiers would be required even to initiate the program. That of itself is an evidence of a strong sense of the injustice of the Zionist program. In view of all these considerations, the project for making Palestine distinctly a Jewish commonwealth should be given up. The King Crane report fell on deaf ears. At the Paris Peace Conference, Britain was represented by Prime Minister David Lloyd George and Arthur Balfour. The Zionist delegation was headed by Chaim Wiseman, who presented a map showing the area of the Jewish homeland proposed by the Zionists. This included both Palestine and the east bank of the Jordan River, as well as southern Lebanon and Kunaitra in Syria. At the conference, General Allenby and David Lloyd George outmaneuvered Prince Faisal ben al Hussein. Wiseman and Faisal signed what became known as the Faisal Wiseman Agreement. The real architect of this document was the British Colonel. Thomas Edward Lawrence, also known as Lawrence of Arabia. Faisal signed, but he wrote a reservation in his own handwriting that the agreement could not be implemented unless the Arabs gained their independence. The movement of the Zionists from 1819 has been that the الخارجية ما بكفي يعني مضبوط لنا علاقات كتير كويسة في لندن في لنا لنا مكتب في في نيويورك أو واشنطن ولنا ناس في برلين وفي باريس والأخيره بس إحنا فيهم ناس وإحنا لازم أو نتفق معهم بس نيجي لإشي معهم لازم نأخذهم بعين الاعتبار على الأقل و1919 أسسوا مركز استخباري للحركة الصهيونية. 1919. 1919. وكانوا ناس يعني أنا ذكرت إنه كان في علاقات في كتير من المناطق علاقات منيحة بين اليهود والعرب وكان في يهود كانوا جيل تاني هون يعني إذا أبوهم إجا لهون في 84 1884-86 هم من خلقوا هون ولدوا هون وكانوا يحكوا عربي ويركبوا فرسان ويروحوا عند العرب وكان عندهم أصحاب عرب و... وصاروا يلموا معلومات وشو المعلومات؟ معلومات من نوع, نوع واحد معلومات سياسية شو الرأي العام؟ هل بدهم يوافقوا مع المشروع الصهيوني أو لا؟ وين في أراضي فاضية؟ وين في ناس ممكن يبيعوا أراضي لليهود؟ هذا كان الإشي الثاني حكي الثالث من نقدر نقول كان إذا في خطة لمهاجمة يهود بمنطقة معينة يكون واحد يقول لك يعني جماعة قعدوا عندنا وحكوا بكرة بدنا نروح عن مستوطنة معينة ومع برودة هو يروح يحكي لأصحاب اليهود In 1920 the first British governor for Palestine was appointed London selected the Jewish Zionist Herbert Samuel as the first British High Commissioner for Palestine Samuel arrived to implement what he had proposed five years earlier, 
to prepare Palestine to become a Jewish state. Samuel was a friend of General Edmund Allenby, and correspondence exchanged between the two indicated complete agreement over Britain's role. The second clause of the British Mandate document approved by the League of Nations had stipulated that the British Mandatory shall be responsible for placing the country under political, administrative and economic conditions that will secure the establishment of the Jewish national home. On his first day on the job, Samuel made Hebrew an official language of Palestine alongside Arabic and English. The letters E and Y were added to the word Palestine in Hebrew as an abbreviation of the words Eretz Yisrael, meaning Land of Israel. Herbert Samuel, under the British Empire, was the one who created Israel. Law. He put the laws around 100 laws so that he could allow the Arab territory to the Jews. Secondly. سمح لليهود بأن يكون لهم نظام تعليم منفصل عن نظام حكومة فلسطين وبنوا أيضا نواة وزارة الطاقة لأنه عملوا محطات كهرباء لهم وأيضا وزارة الأشغال ووزارة المياه وأهم ما عمله الإنجليز أن سمحوا لهم بأن يكون لهم جيش منفصل أنا أتكلم عن 1920 وهربرت صمويل وهو نفسه بيقول أنا سوف أعمل على تطبيق روح تصريح بالفور بنقول إن يقول عنه أنه اليهود الصالح وايزمن يقول نحن الذين عيناه وايزمن Britain provided the muscle um, under which they could simply emigrate I mean they couldn't have emigrated were it not for uh, the British presence um, because the the, um, the crucial battle in the early stages was simply getting Jews into Palestine and acquiring land. They couldn't have done that without uh, British uh, government's um, sponsorship. The British government took the most important things to the British and 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 واحنا نشوف هالاشياء مش ما نشوفها لكن ما نوعاهاش يعني انا في جيلي في هذاك الوقت وحموا الوكاله اليهوديه التي كانت شبه حكومه لليهود ايام الانتداب واعطوها كل المساعدات العسكريه والماديه وساعدوها على اخفاء نفسها فهي مهاره صهيونيه مؤامره بريطانيه والى حد ما واسف ان اقول غباء أو بساطة عربية فلسطينية As Britain sided with the Jews, increasing numbers of Palestinian farmers who were expelled from farmlands began to form revolutionary groups in rural areas. In 1921, Palestinians organized large demonstrations against the immigration of the Jews. At that time, the Palestinian leadership was in effect hereditary within one family, the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem. Amin al-Husseini inherited his position at the age of 25, following the death of his brother Camille, who had in turn succeeded their father, Taha al-Husseini. The leadership sent successive delegations to London to discuss the Palestinian question. <laughs> نخبة دقيقة جدا رقيقة جدا بالعدد يعني وبالتعليم تقابل نخبة إمبراطوريات يعني اليهود في بداية القرن العشرين نخب إمبراطوريات نخب إمبراطوريات فعلا يعني تقريبا في كل منطقة وكل لقاء لقاء للمؤسسات الفلسطينية اللي أسست هذيك الفترة اللي 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 مثلا اللجنة المسيحية المسلمية المسلمية وكل المؤسسات والمجلس الإسلامي على والهيئة الإسلامية كل المؤسسات 
بعد كم من ساعة من الجلسة كان في تكرير لليهود هيك وهيك حكوا هذا رأيه هيك وهذا ممكن تشتغلوا معه وهذا عدو لكم وهذا ممكن تشتروا بالمال وإلى آخره وتكرير يعني موجودة بالأرشي فساهيوني On the ground, work continued to achieve the objective of the British mandate. The British government's report to the Council of the League of Nations set out the achievements of the mandate in the year 1925. These included the immigration of more than 33,000 Jews who were granted Palestinian nationality, three times the figure of the previous year. In addition, 13 new settlements were inaugurated and the Histadrut, the Jewish labor union, was set up under the direction of David Ben-Gurion. Meanwhile, the Jewish town of Tel Aviv was accorded domestic autonomy. In addition, in 1925, the Hebrew University was officially opened at a ceremony attended by Governor Herbert Samuel, the guest of honor, Lord Arthur Balfour, and the head of the World Zionist Organization, Chaim Wiseman. As Wiseman's guest, Balfour visited a number of Jewish settlements. In Jerusalem, he held discussions with Samuel and Allenby to decide on the next step. The Palestinians went on strike to protest Balfour's visit and raised black flags. To them, his visit was a bad omen. الصورة المشهورة بتلاقي سيدة من الخليل حاطة ثلاث حجابات سيدة في القدس حاطة حجاب واحد معظم وجهها مبين تحت الحجاب والوطنية المسيحية فيش حجاب وماشين مع بعض وراحوا على بيت المندوب السامي واحتجوا واعترضوا While the Palestinians protested, Wiseman congratulated and honored Samuel for his completion of the first phase of the establishment of a national Jewish homeland. The Zionist movement had shown propaganda films around the world, including this film in French. It superimposes the words, Land of Israel, on a map of Palestine, showing areas which Zionists claim to have acquired as of 1925. The film also shows the area Zionists plan to acquire within the next 25 years. In the summer of 1929, the Jewish agency organized a Zionist gathering to pray at the so-called Wailing Wall, known to the Palestinians as Al-Barak. The incident ignited a popular revolution called the Barak Revolt, led by a Palestinian farmer from the village of Al-Mazar in Janine, known as Farhan Asadi. The British High Commissioner, Sir John Chancellor, issued a strongly worded memorandum calling for all those who took part in the revolt to be severely punished. Farhan Asadi was arrested along with a graduate of the American University in Beirut, Fouad Hassan Hijazi from Safad, as well as Atta Ahmed Alzir from Hebron and Mohammed Halil Jamjou, whose pictures could not be found. Here at the Acre Old Prison, Hajazi, Jia, and Jamjoum were imprisoned. The British sentenced them to death. Arab rulers pled for their sentences to be commuted, but on June the 17th, 1930, the British authorities executed the three men. The graves of the three martyrs still remain in Acre. Their epitaph reads, At the end of our lives we make our plea to the rulers of the Arabs and to Muslims all over the world. Do not trust the foreigners. We lived for the Arab cause and we died for it. <laughs> Jazzy, 
During the first 10 years of the British mandate, the number of Jews in Palestine more than tripled to reach 175,000. Zionists all over the world were proud of their achievement. I am here today to ask you, my fellow Zionists, which attitude shall we take? Which of the possible attitudes that we face shall be our own? I would say to England, though I am only an American Jew, but an old-time reverencing admirer of Great Britain, I would say to England, if I could, an Arab Palestine is a threat to Great Britain and a menace to the world a Jewish Palestine is an asset to Great Britain and a blessing to the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the toast is health and long life to the right honourable Lloyd George. <laughs> As Wiseman applauded, Lloyd George strove to continue the transfer of Palestine to the ownership of the Zionists. It is, as your chairman has reminded you, it is nearly 16 years since he recruited me to the Zionist movement. <laughs> Palestine. Barren and malarial swamps have been converted into happy settlements. Science has been harnessed to waters which had been running wild and waste since the early days of creation. Without vegetation and without life, Empty desolation, that is Palestine. This is how Palestine was described in Europe. But this is how the real Palestine was in the 1930s. The Allah, الخضرة تصير فيها تطلع الصبح تروحي على المكساء تحدى ريحة الخضرة تفحفح نوار على الخيار نوار على البقوس هالبندورة ها الحبة عيفها في الشي بعد عيفها بتذكرها مية في المية إم الدنيا بقت عيفها بالنسبة لي طبريا أجمل مدينة بل أجمل مكان في العالم المسيح لم يقم في مدينة طبريا إنما أقام حول المدينة فيها عمل معظم معجزاته على مياه يا مشهد David Lloyd George, Samuel, Balfour and Churchill were all keen to label the Palestinians Mohammedans, despite the presence of over a hundred thousand Christians in their midst. They uh, did not regard them as yet as belonging to either uh, an Arab national group in general or to local national groups. Uh, the only way they were able to view them was as a religious uh, uh, group of believers. So I think they, they missed the point, for instance, that um, Christians and Muslims actually f uh, founded a new identity, uh, not a religious one, but a national one. The 
هنالك مأزق لدى الاستعمار عندما يستخدم التيولوجيا المسيحية في الرؤية المنطقة والشرق الأوسط اللي أدت إلى تبني الصهيونية فيما بعد مأزق التعامل مع المسيحية الشرقية يعني هذه تشكل مش موجودة في عالمه ولذلك يحاول أنه ينكر وجودها أصلا يعني لأنه مجرد وجودها بتربك كل الصورة In 1933, public protests and rallies intensified in Palestine. Women took part side by side with men. The British authorities cracked down on demonstrations and arrested thousands. Many were killed and wounded. Even Musa Qasim al husseini the former mayor of Jerusalem, at the age of 80, was beaten by British soldiers during a demonstration in Jerusalem. He later died of his injuries. A Palestinian policeman Mohsen Tofik wrote a letter condemning the behaviour of his British senior officer John Faraday, who fired 25 bullets at Palestinian demonstrators in Jaffa. A number of other complaints were filed against Faraday. Four years later, the British government responded by awarding Faraday the King's Police Medal, praising his role in Palestine. Adam. رغبة بريطانيا بمنح المطالب الوطنية للشعب الفلسطيني وعدم رؤيتها للشعب الفلسطيني كمجموعة قومية وطنية ذات حقوق ومعاملات على أساس إنها طوائف أدى في حين عاملت الوكالة اليهودية على أساس أنها ممثلة لمجموعة قومية كل هذا مجتمعا أدى إلى تفاقم الوضع والصدام مع بريطانيا only still images of the Palestinian demonstrations are available in the archives and no moving pictures are anywhere to be found. Meanwhile, movie cameras were widely used to document Zionist and British activities in Palestine. In the mid-1930s, Tel Aviv raised the Zionist flag, exporting cotton and diamonds from Jewish factories while Jewish immigration and settlement building continued. كان من أهم تحديات هذا العمل أن نجد الصور الأرشيفية التي حاولت الدعاية الصهيونية محوها. استغرق الأمر أشهرا من البحث في الأرشيف البريطاني هنا في لندن لنجد بالصوت والصورة بعضا من الحقيقة المغيبة. Most of the Palestinians, intellectuals, leaders, journalists, were still unaware how determined the Zionist movement is of dispossessing them from Palestine. Figures show how the number of Jews immigrating to Palestine increased from 4,000 in 1931 to 9,500 the following year. In 1933, the number jumped to 30,000, then in 1934 to 42,000 and reached its peak of 62,000 in 1935. 
That same year, the Palestinian poet Abdul Rahim Mahmoud wrote a poem which he read in the presence of Prince Saud bin Abdul Aziz when he came to visit Jerusalem. The poem said, Did you come to visit the Holy Aqsa Mosque or to bid it farewell before it is lost? هذه الأراضي عم بتروح الوعد عم ينفذ غياب أي تفاعل معها من الحكم البريطاني في قمع وفي بطش وفي قوانين رهيبة في الحكم البريطاني لحد اليوم إسرائيل عم بتطبقها بالاعتقالات وفي الإبعاد وفي البطش اتحرك من 35 عز الدين القسام الشهيد عز الدين القسام يمثل حالة في الثلاثينات حالة بأنه في بعدها العربي للقضية بأنه جاء, يعني جاء من سوريا في البعد الديني للقضية ويعني بارتباطه بالمسجد بعملية تنظيمه بعناده في المقاومة في إصراره على مقاومة المحتل عندما أرسل القسام للقيادة الفلسطينية في القدس ليستشيرهم في الثورة قالوا أنه نحن الوقت غير مناسب لإعلان الثورة الشعب غير ناضج لإعلان الثورة وقالوا أيضا أننا ما زلنا نحن نراهن على إمكانية الحصول على حقوقنا من خلال المفاوضات السياسية as soon as Sheikh Izzadin al-Qassam announced the armed revolution, he was besieged by the British army in the Yabad forest near Jenin. Al-Qassam was pounded by British planes and artillery and was killed. The al-Qassam didn't have a lot of attention from the opponents. ولا نعرف عنها الكثير بسبب الغموض التي اكتنفها وبسبب الحرص الشديد للشيخ عز الدين القسام على سرية العمل وعدم إطلاع الكثيرين إلا الصفوة الصغيرة من طلابه امتدت روح عز الدين القسام في الوسط الفلسطيني وتأثر بها كثير من الفلسطينيين فبدأت مشاعر الانقلاب أو التمرد على الاستعمار البريطاني تظهر في صفوف الشعب الفلسطيني. The Palestinian political leadership came under pressure to halt its negotiations with the British. The Palestinian poet Ibrahim Tukan wrote an ironic poem addressed to the leadership in 1935, saying, "Oh, you sincere patriots, it is you who carry the heavy burden of the cause." Only a fragment of the country remains to us, so please step down before the remaining parts fly away. بدأ الاضراب في يافا بحرية يافا 19 ديسمبر 1936. القيادة الفلسطينية الأحزاب الفلسطينية إحنا قلنا القيادة الحركة الوطنية الفلسطينية كانت منقسمة إلى أحزاب تقوم على أرضية التناحر العالي. الأحزاب الفلسطينية الستة شكلت قيادة اللجنة العربية العليا. في 25 نيسان 1937 بعد ست ايام من الاضراب حتى تقود الثوره وقد الثوره فعلا Against all principle, the British government imposed the Balfour Declaration, which is abhorred by all Arabs in the Near East, and on favoring the establishment of a national home for Jews, forgot intentionally to safeguard the civil rights of the non-Jewish population. The Arabs, who decided on a general and a complete strike, until the total and immediate stoppage of Jewish emigration is brought about and until the government introduces an essential change in its present policy. When the strike was one of the most important in the history, the strike of 36, all Palestine was struck. And this is the result of the conditions that were happened in the struggle of the war. حكم الانتداب وتحيز الانتداب مع اليهود وتمكينهم من تسهيل الامور عليهم في كل شيء. The strike shocked the British mandatory authorities. They undertook harsh punitive actions, arresting anyone suspected of links with the revolutionaries and destroying their homes. In Jaffa alone, more than 200 houses were demolished as a collective punishment. Demolitions in other villages and cities followed. The British insisted that destroying Palestinian houses was justified as a means to end the revolt. What 
تتذكر عن الانجليز بالبلد شو كانوا يعملوا الانجليز الانجليز حطوا مخيع حطوا مين حطوا المركز من هذا على الطريق مين ما فات خالي إله خالي ماخذ الشغيري تبعه فاهمي قال له فوت انت والشغيري تبعك بدك تكنس المركز قال له انا ماخذ شغيرتي ضربوه لما ضربوه ضربوه لريمون اسمه ريمون الضابط تموا يقتلوا لمات اخذناه عملوا عمليه على حيفا في مستشفى حمزي ف قريم بهذا لهذا لقالوا من الضربه هون مديل الشحم رايح ذايب ومات باكوا لهلبونا شو يعملوا؟ ايه يقتلوا الزلام ويأخذوهم على السجن على طول كان على شرشور هذا البلد ولا شرشور هذا عند بنيامين هاي يحبسوهم هناك بشهر شهرين وشغلوهم في المحاجر شغال الشاقة وجبوهم هان على نور شمس على المحاجر اشغال الشاقة إذا بتقري مذكرات بنغوريون كان يتحدى يتحدى مفاوضه العربي في قمة الثورة في قمة ال 36 في جلساته مع موسى العلمي اللي رتبها واكهوب المندوب السامي قال له احنا إن حضور فعلي لا يستطيع الغربي ببريطانيا أن تقول لنا لا من أنتم في بريطانيا During the Palestinian strike David Ben Gurion, the head of the Jewish agency, discussed with the British High Commissioner the possibility of resettlement in Transjordan for Palestinians who had been expelled from the territory of the Jewish settlements. Wakhope's response was that this was a good idea. In 1936, the Palestinian people launched their national general strike, protesting Britain's alliance with the Zionist movement. During the six months of the strike, 195 Palestinians were killed and over 800 wounded. The leaders of the Arab states advised the Palestinians to bring the strike to an end. البيان لما طلع الأمير عبد الله موقع علي وملك اليمن الإمام وناشدوا أهل فلسطين إنه فكوا الإضرار بأخي والأمور بنحلها مع الحليفة والحليفة نواها الطيبة وكذا وكذا وإعطاء بريطانيا فرصة حتى تثبت حسن نواياها حسن نوايا بين قوسين ومن مؤسف إنه حتى الآن نتحدث عن قرارات الأمم المتحدة وعن مشاريع أمريكية وأوروبية ونقول فلنعطي الغرب فرصة لإثبات حسن نوايا كأنه سبعين سنة ليست كافية لإقناعنا بأنه ليس هناك حسن نوايا من الغرب The Palestinian leadership bowed to the appeal from the Arab heads of state and agreed to meet the British Royal Commission of Inquiry headed by Earl Peel. In its report of 1937, the Peel Commission recommended the partition of Palestine. Its report drew the frontiers of a Jewish state in one third of Palestine, marked in red, and an Arab state in the remaining two thirds to be merged with Transjordan. The area from Jerusalem to Jaffa would remain a mandated territory. British newspapers published the Commission's proposal that Palestine be divided into three parts. The Egyptian newspaper Al Makatam responded that the Peel Commission had come to implement a plan that had already been decided in London. The Commission also approved the principle of removing Palestinians from the lands allocated to the Jewish state wherever necessary. يصر السحيونين من تقرير Peel Commission كل السرور لأنه مضمون في التقرير فكرة transfer i.e. انتقال الشعوب من منطقة أخرى 
خلال عقيدتهم أو قوميتهم فبالنسبة إلا الصهيونيين معنى الترانسفر يعني قد يوصلوا على دولة يهودية مية بالمية مع حق و permission الدولة المنتدب فذلك كان يعني أحسن شيء في تقرير فيلك ميشن بالنسبة إلى الحركة الصهيونية تنظيف وتطهير فلسطين من سكانها العرب من وجهة النظر الصهيونية عملية تم التخطيط لإلها عشرات السنين قبل وجود لجنة تسمى بلجنة الترانسفير واللي التي كان يرأسها يوسف فايتس فايتس الذي كان يشكل الـ 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 الساعد الأيمن لبن غوريون وهذا في سنوات الثلاثين طبعا هذا يؤكد أن المخطط الصهيوني كان يدرس مسبقا ضرورة التخطيط المنهجي لتطهير هذه البلاد من العرب خدمة للفكر الصهيوني لكي يتسنى ترويج فكرة أرض بدون سكان لسكان بدون أرض From the 1930s, especially from the late 1930s onwards, they did uh, uh, start to discuss it very intensively, but still secretly. So I think it wasn't uh, possible for many Palestinians to know what we know today as historians because it was in the archives. كان في جهاز تصنّت يعني اليهود في الثلاثينات هذا إيش أنا استغربت جدا يعني المكالمات حجم من الحسين من من مكتبه كان في تصنّت اليهود وكانوا يسجلوا كل اللي بيحكي. وهي كانوا يعرفوا كمان إذا في يهود بيحكوا مع جماعة حاجة أمين وكانوا يحكوا يروحوا لأن أنتم ويحكوا لهم أنتم بتغلطوا حتى ما حكوا أشياء أسرار يعني ما كشفوا أسرار Between 1936 and 1937 the British killed 1,000 Palestinians while 37 British police and 69 Jews were killed In September 1937 Britain disbanded the Arab Higher Committee, headed by the Mufti of Jerusalem, Amin al-Husseini. Five of its members were exiled to the Seychelles Islands in the Indian Ocean, a remote British colony. These included the Mayor of Jerusalem, the physician Hussein Fakhri al-Haldi, who documented British attitudes and support for Zionism in the diaries he wrote to the Seychelles. In October 1937, Fearing British imprisonment, Haj Amin al Husseini and other members of the Palestinian leadership fled to Lebanon. There was no longer a Palestinian political leadership in the land of the Palestinian people. In 1938, schoolchildren in Palestine learned that the borders of Palestine were Lebanon, Egypt, Syria, Transjordan and the Mediterranean Sea. This is how Palestine looked on the world map. In just 10 years, everything would change. The Palestinian revolution persisted despite the lack of political leaders. To crush the revolution, the British had to bring an additional 20,000 men to reinforce their troops. بريطانيا جندت من أجل أن تكسر هذه الثورة أف يعني كانت جندت يعني أشهر جنرالاتها الجنرال ويفل، الجنرال ديل، الجنرال ماكبلان، الجنرال ريش. أربع جنرالات ومشتركوا في الحرب العالمية الأولى وخبرات يعني خبرات عسكرية كبيرة جدا. The British spared no effort to disarm the Palestinian people and the search for weapons was intensive. وصلوا لقوا رصاصه فاضي في باب بيتنا ينسوا في البيت. 
كانت بريطانيا تمنع اي واحد يحمل السلاح حتى لو فشك يحاكموا عليها ممنوع يعني في البلد في ثلاث اربع بنات فيش يجوا عندنا تفتيش يفتشوا يحطوا يكب الطحين على الكمح الكمح على الظلا مع العدس يخرب طرداره ويطلع يطلعوا نحن عند المدرسة يصيروا يصيروا يحكوا كلام عاطل الإنجليز آه تيفتشوا البلد وروحوا ونرجع الدار بهدلونا الله يبهدلهم كيف كانوا يجوا ياخذوا النسوان ويحطوهم تاخذ لي امي على الجامع ياخذوهم يحطوهم في الجامع ويفوتوا يفتشوا البيوت على الرجال يدوروا على الرجال ويقولوا غيمت غيمت بس يجي الانجليز بالدبابات وبالكذب يعني وبالطيارات يهربوا رجال لانه يعني بدهم يدوروا على رجال الثوره. بدي احكي لك الحكايه اجى العيد لبسنا اواعينا وطلعنا من نروح على الجامع نصلي ما حسينا للطيارات طب 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 الا الجيش دخل لما اخذونا احدونا فتحوا في كرجات محلات وقالوا كم هون بهالسنجات وفلينا عبونا في المحلات كلياتها سكروا علينا فش لا شرب ولا شيء ولا شيء صرنا مبول مبول على حالنا الرد فعل بالنسبه بالنسبه للسلطه البريطانيه كان عنيف جدا كونوا في انذاك كونسنتريشن كامب في فلسطين واخذوا الاف من المواطنين الفلسطينيين وحطوهم في هذول المخيمات للكونسنتريشن كامبس وفي نفس الوقت اعتقالات نعم اعتقالات Sataj Bahai, the wife of journalist Najib Nazar, was the first female political detainee to be put in prison, where she remained for a year and a half. The Palestinian press published a cartoon called The Dance of Death. It showed the Zionist leaders, Wiseman and Jabotinsky, building their state on a foundation of human skulls. While the British were disarming the Palestinians, they allowed Jews to carry arms, claiming that Jews were a minority who needed to defend themselves. In 1938, the first time such a thing happened in the Middle East, this Jewish minority, with the aid of underground Zionist organizations, exploded bombs in markets and buses. For three consecutive days in July that year, Jewish gangs blew up cars in Haifa and Jerusalem. 68 Palestinians were killed. تصور الصهيونية بدون عنف سواء قبل قيام دولة إسرائيل أو بعد قيام دولة إسرائيل. Not only did the British turn a blind eye to Jewish arms, they also supported the training of special Jewish forces, financed by the Jewish Agency, but trained by a British officer, Ord Wingate, who was a Zionist sympathizer. Ord Wingate was very racist towards the Arabs. During his role as a British army officer in the Arab revolt, that he decided to uh, append to his units Jewish soldiers, and he taught them how to occupy Palestinian villages, expel them, destroy them. And I think in many ways he contributed directly to the ideas of ethnic cleansing that would be perpetrated on the ground in 1948. British volunteers plus three... A British TV series about Wingate's life supports what the documents have revealed. 
did give full approval for your scheme using a combined force of British and Jewish personnel. British soldiers and Haganah men will assemble at 1900 hours, 15th of May, 1938. Ord Wingate was looked upon by Moshe Dayan, who later became Israel's defense minister, as his mentor. Israeli brigades under Wingate's command organized night raids against Palestinian revolutionaries to murder them in their villages. وصلت الثورة الفلسطينية إلى قمتها في سنة في صيف 1938 وكانت هناك قيادات ميدانية كبيرة جدا. هناك تقريبا 65 قائد محلي و 14 قائد منطقة فتقريبا من 60 إلى 70% من هؤلاء القادة كانوا من القساميين. مثلا في الجليل الأعلى كان هناك القائد خليل القائد القسامي الذي اشترك في معركة تعبد مع الشيخ القسام خليل عيسى أو إبراهيم الكبير منطقة جيل أعلى عمل المنطقة الثانية كانت منطقة الجليل الأدنى أو الجليل الأسفل وكان أيضا فيها بقود هذه المنطقة قائد قسامي لذلك أنا قلت لك الثورة كانت تبتدى ثورة القسام أبو إبراهيم الصغير اللي هو توفيق لإبراهيم The leader in the area of Janine was Farhan Assadi Nablus, commanded by Mohammed Saleh al-Hamad, and after he was killed in May 1938, Abdul Fattah Mustafa took over. Jerusalem's commander was Abdul Qadr al-Hassani, and that of Jaffa was Hassan Salama. Other leaders of the revolution were Atiyah Ahmed Awad, who was killed in March 1938, and Yusef Abu Dora, executed in 1939. The general commander of the revolution was Abdul Rahim Al Haj Muhammad. لا حق الإنجليز الوالد ووضعوا جوائز لمن يلقى القبض عليه أو يأتي به. والحمد لله تمكن من التخفي والهرب وبدأوا يشكلوا فصائل فلسطينية للجهة. واستمرت هذه الفصائل تعتمد على نفسها وتعتمد على القرى وأذكر عندما جاء الإنجليز جاءوا ونسفوا بيتنا كنا نيام فأيقظونا وأخرجونا من البيت ونسفوا البيت على ما فيه الوالد بعث رسالة إلى الحجمين في تاريخ 18-3 1939 ويشير إلى الحجمين بأن بعض الثوار جاءوا إلى دمشق ويصرف عليهم على الملابس وعلى أشياء لا تهم الثورة كثيرا ويجب أن توجه فلوس الثورة إلى الرصاص والبنادي In the last line of his letter, he warned that if the attitude of the political leadership did not change, it would be the end of the Palestinian revolution. A few days later, Abdul Rahim al Haj Muhammad was killed in an ambush set up by the British in the village of Sanur. Abdul Rahim's wife had already passed away five years earlier. With his death, Four children became orphans. قضية حصار القائد عبد الرحيم الحج محمد وسقوطه في صنور في أذار 1939 هذا الملف ما زال مغلقا في الأرشيفات البريطانية وفي الأرشيفات الإسرائيلية. والجود بالنفس أقصى غاية الجود الشباب المجاهدين الناضل واستشهد هذولا قمة. الأمة هو خي هم خ أحسن خير العناصر في الأمة على الإطلاق لا أحد يدنو إلى أقدامهم لكن لم يجدوا القيادات التي ترعاهم تنظيم والتخطيط فقدنا من الأصل 
القيادات كانت دون مستوى وعي المرحلة الحالية. Between 1938 and 1939, the British held dozens of military tribunals. 112 Palestinians were executed, among them an elderly man of almost 80. He was executed while fasting during the holy month of Ramadan. Sheikh Fahan al Saadi. اهتمام شديد كان عند البريطانيين بالأمن ويسجلون هنا جميع الشخصيات الوطنية إنه هذا شخص مشاغب وهو غير محب للسلام ولأنه يحرض الناس the British and the Zionists did not eliminate only those Palestinians who bore arms. The Bishop of Acre, Gregorius Hajar, who advocated Christian Muslim unity against the Zionist movement, was also murdered as he traveled to Haifa. Bishop Hajar was known as the Bishop of the Arabs and was buried at the Roman Catholic Virgin Lady Church in Haifa in a majestic setting. Oh. بريطانيا كانت تمارس إلى ذلك ضغط هائل على السكان من سياسة العقاب الجماعي حرق البيادر وتجميع الرجال وإجبارهم بالسير على الجمر وعلى ألواح الصبر والتعذيب وخلط المواد الغذائية وبعضها خلط الزيت بالسكر وما إلى ذلك والتجويع وهدم المنازل والحصار الشديد في أيام الحرب القائضة كل هذه الأمور مجتمعة أثرت على معنويات الشعب الفلسطيني وقدرته على الاستمرار بالثورة خاصة الكثير من من كوادر الثورة تم القضاء عليها. In addition to the killings of leaders and cadres, the revolution was also infiltrated. صاروا اليهود يشتغلوا مع المخابرات البريطانية مرات مثلا كان واحد يهودي يجي عنده صاحب عربي بيجيب معلومات اليهود بيتصل على الجيش البريطاني وبيروحوا ما بعد يسوى اعتكالات في عشان اليهود طبعا ما لهمش دولة وما لهمش جيش حقيقي يسوى اعتكالات في في بلد معين هذا صار صار كثير وكمان كان عشان علاقتهم كانت كويسة مع مع البريطانيين اليهود مثلا إذا كان بدهم يسوى واحد من الثوار يجندوه كعميل كعميل كانوا يتصلوا بالبريطانيين يقولوا هذا الشخص ممكن يشتغل معنا هو في السجن فلتوا عنه خلوه يطلع ويشتغل معنا وأسسوا نوادي المسلمة الوطنية وكان كانت تدعم من قبل الساهنة وما حكوا ضد الحركة الوطنية مثلا لما راحوا وفود الحركة الوطنية للندن هم كانوا يبعثوا بركيات ضد هدول الوفود هدول الوفود ما ما تمثلنا والى اخره يعني الصهيونية كانت تأسس نوادي لا اسمها اسلامية اسلامية وطنية مش بس اسلامية اسلامية وطنية وتدعمها بالمال تدعمها بسرا يعني اه بسير وكانوا يقعدوا ما بعد اليهود هدول الجماعة من هدول النوادي وكتبوا بركيات للمندوب السامي وللوزير الخارجي البريطاني In the years of the revolution, between 1936 and 1939, 5,000 Palestinians were killed and 14,000 wounded, whilst 100 British soldiers and 400 Jews were killed. واحد من كل عشرة شاب فلسطيني من هذا ال أمر اللي يعمل الحرب يعني بين ال 18 وبين ال 40 أم في السجن أم مكتول أم مجروح أم مطرود من البلد ففعلا كل الجيل الذي قد يكون جيش لمكاومة الحركة اليهودية في الأربعينات كان مفقود 
اللي كان نشيت بالثورة أو انقتل أو هرب أو انعدم يعني ما كان في أي مؤسسات تقريبا يعني بالمجتمع الفلسطيني لا مؤسسات ولا ولا نشيتين ولا ولا إشي يعني كانت كانت كان كان المجتمع بوضع كثير كثير متدهور يعني. And the Palestinian society was leaderless in many many ways, both militarily and politically. And although there was a Palestinian leadership in exile, it had very uh, a loose connection to the events inside Palestine. So I think it is fair to say that from 1939 onwards, there isn't a real Palestinian leadership on the ground. And this is one of the reasons that contributed to what happened in 1948. The battle for Palestine was lost by the Palestinians not in 1948, but in the late 1930s, because Britain completely smashed to the ground the Arab revolt and the Arab irregular forces. In the same year, Britain held a conference at St. James's Palace in London. Arab delegations and a Zionist delegation both took part, but in separate meetings. The Palestinian people be الوفد الاردني والمصري واليمني والعراقي نفس الوقت بتلاقي نفس القاعه وبنفس الجلسه بتلاقي الوفد الصهيوني اليهودي بن غوريون وايزمان وشريت ومحضون بملوك اليهود الاغنياء في العالم يعني عدنا لنتفاوض مع الحاكم الشريك مع مع العدو الحقيقي at this conference, Britain announced that it had fulfilled its obligation under the mandate to establish the basis of the Jewish state in Palestine. A year after the outbreak of World War II, with the cooperation of the Jewish Agency, 15,000 Jews joined the British Army. The Jewish military, the Haganah, transformed itself into an army with its own air force. وكثير من قد اليهود اللي قادوا الحرب في 48 ولا يزال بعضهم كما لا يزال بجوز بعضهم أحياء منهم اللي اشتغلوا في الجيش البريطاني كمان في هذه الفترة وهذا على فكرة أثر في 48 عشان كان في كثير ألاف من اليهود منظمين و ومجندين بيعرفوا يستعملوا سلاح ومنهم زباط ومنهم بيعرفوا بالمدافع يعني وكل بالسلكي وبكل ما كل الاشياء وكل انه الجيش مهني لازم يعرف شيء ما كان موجود بال بالطرف الفلسطيني طبعا لا شك ان الخبره التي استفادت الجندي اليهودي من خلال الحرب العالميه الثانيه استفاد كثير خلال حرب فلسطين في الأربعينات رأينا في فلسطين جنود يهودي لهم خبرة واسعة في استعمال الإسلاحات في كل المجالات حتى في الطيران وفي الدبابات وفي السلاح البسيطة التي تحمل يحمل الجندي العادي كان لهم كل الخبرة وبعدين في في العلوم العسكرية يوجد ضباط يهودية اللي وصلوا إلى هذا الدرجة تحت الجيش البريطاني. Meanwhile, in Palestine, an unusual intelligence operation was taking place. The first stage was the collection of material about every village in Palestine. This was called the village files. Uh, project. Uh, they were quite amazing because they had information of every village uh, in Palestine, uh, mainly uh, about the details of how good actually it would be to take it over. So there's a lot of information about the quality of the land, 
how rich the people were, to the extent that they even knew how many fruit are on each tree, there, there is on each tree. Uh, what were the political affiliation of people? How easy or how difficult it would be to occupy it? So, uh, it so was they started gathering in the 30s? Or in, in the late 30s. Yeah. In the late 30s and early 1940s, yes. They were actually using, uh, exploiting uh, Arab hospitality, because if you come to a village in Palestine, it doesn't matter who you are, you're invited. And they used that hospitality in order to spy around. And uh, especially what they needed were two things. One is to know how how to access the village later on in order to occupy it and, occupy it, and uh, to know what the village had in terms of assets and so on, that when they occupied that people would not you know, run away with what the Zionists wanted for, for themselves. The immigration of Jews to Palestine continued, but the Zionist movement wanted the emission of a larger number than the British were letting in each year. In 1940, the French ship Patria docked near the port of Haifa with 1,800 illegal Jewish immigrants on board. The Zionist movement decided to blow open one side of the ship to compel the British Mandatory Authority to admit the illegal immigrants. More than 260 Jews were killed in this terrorist operation. The Haganah members who placed the bomb disclosed the details of this operation in the late 1950s. Here in New York in May 1942, a major development occurred within the Zionist movement. The Zionists held a meeting at the Biltmore Hotel in New York, attended by 600 prominent delegates from Europe and the United States, with the presence of David Ben-Gurion, the head of the Jewish Agency, and chaired by Chaim Wiseman, president of the World Zionist Organization. <laughs> طبعاً كان ممهد لذلك علاقات قوية بين الصهيونيين في أمريكا وبين الحزبين الديمقراطي والجمهوري وحتى الآن العلاقة قوية لكن تطورت العلاقة خروج أمريكا من الحرب العالمية الثانية سيدة العالم الغربي ونزول بريطانيا إلى إمبراطورية سابقة حيث كانت الشمس لا تغيب عنها وأصبحت تغيب عنها تماماً وبالأساس تغيب عن لندن الشمس ذلك شجع اليهود على أنه أن يعتمدوا على أمريكا من خلال استمالة الزعامات والقيادات الأمريكية من الحزبين عن طريق رأس المال والدعاية الصهيونية في أمريكا. The Biltmore Declaration underlined American support for the establishment of a Jewish Commonwealth in the whole of Palestine, which would commit itself to back American interests. In 1943, General Patrick Hurley, a former Secretary of War in the American administration, submitted a report to the White House following a visit to Palestine and talks with David Ben-Gurion. In his report he said, the Zionist organization in Palestine has committed itself to an enlarged program which would include a sovereign Jewish state which would embrace Palestine and probably eventually Transjordan, the eventual transfer of the Arab population from Palestine to Iraq, Jewish leadership for the entire Middle East in the fields of economic development and control. The following year, the World Jewish Conference held at Atlantic City in the American state of New Jersey discussed the need to compel the British to quit Palestine. It also called for international protection for Jews after the Holocaust in Europe. Jewish Commonwealth inherits Israel. Always Israel means nothing more than justice to the Jew, freedom for the Jew, equality of the Jewish people with all the free peoples of Earth. That the real solution of the Jewish problem cannot be brought about unless the Jewish people will be given the right and will be helped by the United Nations to establish Palestine once and for all as it own Jewish people. This conference appeals to the United Nations to ensure 
that the general scheme of post-war reconstruction shall include the establishment of Palestine as a free and democratic Jewish commonwealth. In 1945, the US President Harry Truman gave his approval to the immigration of 100,000 Jews to Palestine. Earlier in the year, the Zionist movement had contributed $2 million to his presidential campaign. Always hoping that we'll finally arrive at the peace in the world which we anticipated when we uh, created the United Nations. That's, that's the only reason. <laughs> The World Zionist Conference, under Chaim Wiseman's leadership, soon decided to speed the process of driving the British out of Palestine. Its recommendation was that the Jewish Haganah should collaborate with the Zionist Ergen and the so-called Stern Gang to reach this goal. This decision was taken after David Ben-Gurion persuaded the Jewish community in America to pay for the purchase of arms manufacturing machinery so that the Haganah could now produce its own weapons. Wallahi, inhum bi jbal, man shurinu bi darrabu, nathach aliyo. Kul shur, harika buddina, mishu bithawa adho, leish adho nbi amalu heich. Yidibbu halum a shouch, ah wallahi a shouch yidibbu halum, wa yidarrabu, nathach aliyo. Meanwhile, the Palestinian politician Musa al-Alami made a tour of the Arab world. He discovered that the general Arab view was that there were 40 million Arabs and only 600,000 Jews, and it would therefore be very easy to control the Jewish minority. The British realized how volatile the situation had become. In February 1946, they decided to evacuate British families from Palestine. Discussions went on between the Zionist movement and the British authorities. Documents reveal that Chaim Wiseman held secret conversations in March and July of 1946 with the British High Commissioner, Alan Cunningham. In these talks, they discussed the partition of Palestine and how the parts of a viable Israeli state should be linked up, giving it control of both the Negev Desert and the waters of Galilee. At the same time, the British army continued to confiscate arms from the Palestinians. In the first half of 1946, over 300 Palestinians were arrested for the possession of weapons. Meanwhile, the Mufti Amin al-Husseini was in France after spending six years in Italy and Germany during World War II. He had hoped the Axis countries would win and had vainly anticipated that there would be a promise of independence for Palestine. Der Großmufti von Jerusalem besichtigt musulmanische Truppen der deutschen Wehrmacht. يعني حاجة مين كان يخاف إنه إذا بتصير في هون مؤسسات ويكون في هون كيادة جديدة يمكن يعني ما 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 يكون عنده تعصير زي ما كان وما يكون على منصب الكيادي مفتي القدس الحقيقة الحاج أمين يعني نحن بنحسن النية فيه لكن كان في قناعتي أنا الشخصية دون مستوى القيادة لكن تنسيش البيئة العامة البلد الرجل كان مفتي فلسطين العام ورئيس المجلس الاسلامي ما شاء الله تعالى مش انا اللي عينته اللي عينه الانجليزي يعني كمان The Mufti went to Cairo in May 1946 to participate in the first Arab summit attended by the leaders of Egypt, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Syria and Lebanon. The summit was followed by an emergency meeting of Arab foreign ministers in Bludan, Syria. Also attending the meeting, as an observer, was the director of British military intelligence in the Middle East, Brigadier Clayton. Back in Palestine, the British army was suffering Zionist terrorist attacks that made headlines. ...against British restrictions, extremists wreck a train on the outskirts of Jerusalem. Armed crewmen inspect the hole where the explosion which caused the wreck occurred, and guards patrol the area. 
Violence and death ride the ancient streets of Jerusalem. And here the climax, blasting of police headquarters. Three men lost their lives in this attack. A roving band shot up the station first, then launched high explosives. Soldiers combed the debris for other dead as turmoil seethes in the cradle of brotherly love. New High Commissioner Cunningham investigates. Tommies patrol the streets and quiet descends. Is it the calm before another storm? The King David Hotel in Jerusalem was the target of an operation planned by the Zionist Ergen Group. In this suite, which hosted the headquarters of the British administration, the unexpected happened. The terrorist attack demolished the entire southwest side of the hotel. 91 people were killed. Former Ergen members later claimed responsibility for this attack, yet the King David Hotel was not to be their last target. In 1947, the Ergen blew up the British Officers Club at Goldsmith House in Jerusalem. Jewish terrorist gang to intimidate authority. 16 persons die and 13 others are injured as extremists blow up the Officers Club in an unremitting campaign of violence. Universal's cameraman, on the scene minutes after the explosion, records the stunned and shaken victims as they are carried from the wreckage. Few of the 50 officer inmates of the club escaped injury as extremists, under cover of rifle fire, hurled explosive-laden suitcases through the windows and doors of the building. Several of the injured died later of their wounds. The club is a shambles. The situation escalated when the Ergen kidnapped and executed two British sergeants, Clifford Martin and Mervyn Pace. The two men were hanged in a field near Netanya. Follow the hanging of two British sergeants by extremists. Palestine becomes an armed camp. The sad hanging of the two um, uh, British army sergeants probably accelerated the uh, speedy exodus from Palestine of the British mandate. The two soldiers were buried in the war cemetery in Ramla. Their bodies are there to this day. During 1946 and 1947, the Jews killed 169 British soldiers. On the other side, 37 Zionists were killed. Menachem Begin was the leader of Ergen. The group symbol was the map of a Jewish state that encompassed Palestine and Transjordan. 25 high-ranking officials of the Irgunzweil Leumi and Stern Gang. British authorities arrested Bergin after distributing his photo as a wanted terrorist. Thirty years later, Begin became the Prime Minister of Israel. We are signed by President Sadat and Prime Minister Begin, and it will be good. In 1978, he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize along with Egypt's President Anwar al Sadat. During the last eight years of the British mandate in Palestine, British documents recorded over 500 terrorist attacks by Zionist Jews. The most novel of these was the mailing of explosive packages to British officials.
from Haifa come pictures showing the result of the recent outrage that shattered the brief lull in terrorist activity. The incident was caused by a man, believed by some to be one of the Stern gang this time, driving a stolen van full of explosives to quarters where it blew up. Two British and two Arab policemen were killed and others are reported missing. More than 60 police, soldiers and civilians were injured. Many of the casualties were caused by flying glass and a great deal of damage was done, not only at police headquarters but also in the neighbourhood. Windows were broken as far as a mile away. Winston Churchill, the former Prime Minister of Britain, commented on the terror attack saying, They have shocked the world. They have affected strongly people like me, who in the past have been consistent friends of the Jews and constant architects of their future. However, the British refrained from a violent response to acts of Zionist terrorism, even though there were 75,000 British soldiers in Palestine. وهؤلاء اليهود كانوا يعرفون الخطط ويحاولون إجهاضها الشيء الثاني كان نفوذ الحركة الصهيونية في الخارج قوي جدا على حكومة البريطانية ويؤثرون عليها كي تؤثر على ضباطها وعلى الانتداب البريطاني في فلسطين At the recommendation of the United States Britain decided to turn over the Palestinian problem to the United Nations. British public opinion will permit no more expenditure of life and treasure. It will acquiesce no longer in the use of British forces and the squandering of British lives to impose a policy in Palestine which one or other of the parties is determined to resist. It has brought down on our heads the execration of the Jews and the bitter resentment of the Arabs. It has made us the butt of malicious criticism throughout the world. We have played our part.